Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. So, today I'm doing something very, very, very different. I want to talk about plagiarism. Now, any of you that are in university, school, college, I'm sure you've heard the word plagiarism, I'm sure you've heard of the consequences of plagiarizing. I've had a few comments and questions from you guys asking how to check your work for plagiarism to make sure that it isn't plagiarized or you haven't copied too much. So I thought a really good way of doing this is to actually get someone on Fiverr to write an essay. Now Fiverr, as you may or may not know, is a place where you can kind of commission someone to do pretty much anything. also found a few sellers that were willing to write my essay for five dollars, which is about, I think it's like four pounds sixty, if I'm not mistaken, four pounds seventy. The pound is extremely weak right now. Um, but yeah, so I actually paid someone, I paid three people to write my essays. Um, I watched a documentary the other day about students that are getting ghostwriters to write their essays for them and how much trouble they actually got into in the end. Um, they got excluded from the universities, they were taken off their courses, they had to retake a year. It's just not worth it. But I thought, you know, let's see what kind of work they'd actually do, let's see if the work is legitimate, let's see if it's original, and let's see if it's plagiarised, and let me show you guys how to check your work and how to make sure that your work is not plagiarised. What is plagiarism? Now there are a number of different types of plagiarism. The first one is just direct plagiarism, just straight up copying someone else's work, copy and pasting, you know, no effort to change, no effort to reference, no effort to do anything, you've just copied someone else's work. The second type is self-plagiarism, so you, you may have submitted that work before in a previous essay and you then resubmit the whole thing again for a different essay and this can come up as self-plagiarism. The next type is mosaic plagiarism and this is kind of called paraphrasing, it uh, can also be called paraphrasing I guess, and um, where you take someone else's work, you change a few words, you s use some synonyms for some words it's the same general structure, the same general vibe, it's just slightly different in terms of the wording. This is still plagiarism. And the last type is accidental plagiarism. So this is where you may not have referenced everything, you may not have written a source for everything or cited everything, but this is still plagiarism. I've never used Fiverr before, but on Fiverr you have a range of different sellers. So you have level one sellers, level two sellers, level three sellers. I've tried to pick sellers that are in all three categories, um, but the higher sellers are more expensive. I gave them all the same brief, so I asked them to write an essay with three references and some critical thought um, and to do with a topic that is my PhD, basically. So I knew that I'll know <laughs> what they're talking about. About a month ago, I sent off the briefs and I paid for it. There were about six or seven rejections, so people just didn't reply back. I got my money back. Someone else said that they didn't want to do it. I got my money back. <laughs> I'm also going to check for plagiarism because regardless of whether they are an A level essay or an A star level essay, if it's plagiarized, it's going straight into the bin and so is your degree. So let's check <laughs> and let's see um, how they did. The first one I got, I actually got it straight away. So as soon as I sent it off, I sent her the brief, she replied back and sent it to me straight away. It's 200 words, so it's not even an abstract, it's barely anything, 200 words, with additional research and references with citation. She has a PhD in environmental sciences. I find it quite hard to believe that someone's going to write an original essay and do research for $5. The second person I chose is this person, this was a guy, um, 500 words with topic research. Again, these are all one day deliveries, so when I actually did manage to successfully send it off, I got a reply back within a day. Specialised in writing books on such a huge range, <laughs> fashion, lifestyle, fitness, sports, health, science, apparently it'll be plagiarism free as well. I find it very hard to believe that someone's going to be able to write a, a book or an essay on all of those topics and it'll be really good. Thirdly, the third person I picked was again this guy from Pakistan. Did not know it was both in Pakistan, but there you go. Um, so this person's got loads of experience in health, medicine, education, psychology. <laughs> we'll see how good they actually are and if it was worth your money. Okay, so this is the first one. Five references, pretty good, that's pretty good. I only asked for three, so 
five is good. Punctuation and spelling and grammar, I wouldn't say is the best, but um, that's fine. I mean, the essay's there. So my question was the role of diaphanous in the actin cortex, and diaphanous is a very important protein in the actin cortex for a number of different kind of structural roles, cell division, and it looks like she's actually done lots of research. I don't see much critical thought, so I wouldn't say that this hits the top range of um, exam answers. I guess it's not bad, it's not bad, let's be honest, it's not bad. So the second essay has only two references. One is Wikipedia, so that already tells me that's not fantastic. There's no referencing in the actual essay, so straight away that's plagiarism. So he's written the first sentence introducing diaphanous, fine. The second sentence, or the third sentence, sorry, says our findings indicate so he's clearly copied and pasted this from a, a research paper because when you write an essay, you don't say our findings. You say the findings of this lab. Okay, let's try the third one. Quite a long essay. Looks decent. I like that. I like this person. They've actually really stuck to the brief. Okay, so what I'm using to check plagiarism is EduBirdie, which um, is, I don't know, a website I just found to help check for plagiarism. It tells you exactly where everything comes from. So hopefully this does that as well. It shows you exactly the bits that are plagiarised and exactly where it comes from. It doesn't matter if it's in a, a blog in the corner of the internet. So this essay is 70% unique, which means that it's 30% plagiarised, which is very high. That's quite high, especially because the there aren't in text referencing. You are allowed to have a certain amount of percentage plagiarised because there are just standard sentences that you just can't, you know, get away with not saying. Um, but anything over sort of 10 to 15 percent is checked quite quite thoroughly. So 30 percent is quite high. Essay number two, okay, 10 to 20 seconds. <laughs> this is really exciting. I've never obviously never paid anyone to write my essay. People are paying others to write their essays. They're ending up in lots of trouble because of it. It's really not worth it. Bad. That's bad. Okay, so this essay is almost 50% unique. So 50% of it is plagiarised. And as you can see, it's not only just plagiarised, but it's not referenced as well. So they've just plagiarised the information, copied it straight up, not even changed, probably changed one or two words. That's bad. Paid for that, you submit that to your university, and that's your whole degree down the drain. It's not a joke, guys. Don't do it. This person has gone to a blog, a WordPress blog, and has found some information about Diaphanous 1 and just copied it. Let's check essay 3. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know if you've ever considered paying someone to write your essay. I think it's something that it's not spoken about at all and it's something that's huge it's a huge industry essay writing is is a huge industry and i just really want to show you guys that it's not worth it it really isn't worth it 58 percent unique oh my gosh okay so this one is 42 percent plagiarized it's just a massive big chunk of writing that's been copied and you know what this person is so smart they copied it from Abcam. Now, Abcam is a place that you go to purchase um, antibodies. They've also gone to Uniprot, which again, which again is something that is only used by scientists or people in the science field. As you can see, all three essays would have led you to losing your degree. That's just straight up. I get so many messages from you asking, how do I check for plagiarism? How do I never plagiarize? You don't need to check because if you write your essay, and you know that what you've written is original. I know that when I write my essays, I've taken information from different places, I've tried to work out what I want to say, and that sentence I've written is an original sentence. Therefore, I don't worry about plagiarism, I know that I'm fine. So if you're asking how to find out whether your work is plagiarised or not, that, that should tell you that you need to redo that piece. That should tell you that you need to go back and write originally and I know it can be hard, I know it's tough. Really taking the time to take time, plan your essays, be organised will lead you to not have to find out whether something's plagiarised or not. I hope that you enjoyed watching this, it's a bit of an experiment to be honest. <laughs> I'm never going to do this again. I thought I would just 
kind of talk about plagiarism but in a bit of a different way um, and I really hope you enjoyed watching this and don't forget to leave me a huge thumbs up, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I'll see you guys in my next one, bye!